Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your daily dose, your spiritual life here with me, Bonnie B. Uh, it's still kind of early. Let me pull that close so y'all can see me. This morning, mm, hold on. This morning, we're going to pick right back up, and we're going to continue talking about the tribe, the Benjamite woman, Esther. We've already learned that she won the beauty contest, and that the pharaohs, well, Axerus, Axerus, what's his name, Axerus, Axerus, King Axerus, um, picked her to put the crown upon her head instead of the head of Vashtar, his original queen, who he told to get naked, and uh, she wouldn't lower herself there. So they removed her, and then Esther shows up. Okay, so at this time, I'm gonna pray, go before the throne of grace, and ask God to come into our lesson. Stop with us. And then um, I'm going to get into our scripture text. Okay? Please join me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace to tell you thank you, Father. We tell you thank you for your protection and your hedge of covering all around us. Father God, as we go forth in knowledge, we ask that you bless this teaching. And bless all those within the sound of my voice. Father God, we thank you for your word going out and not returning unto you void. And we ask that you increase the number of people who are within the sound of my voice. That they may hear your good word and get the message that you mean for them to get. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Now, we're going to pick up right here. Talk a little bit about Haman. Haman was a racist, okay? He didn't like Esther. Not at all. So. Let's move forward in our lessons. And get what we need. Okay. So we're going to pick up right here. The good book states, There is nothing new under the sun. And the book of Esther certainly proves this. After Axerus took Esther as his queen, he promoted a black man who was a, a descendant of Agag a black Amalekite king who was chopped into pieces by the prophet Samuel. 1 Samuel 15.33 Now this man was Haman the Agite, a descendant of the Amalekite king in Esther 3 and 2. And recall that the Amalekites were the offspring of Esau's five marriages to black women of Canaan called the Canaanites. So the Amalekites, the Amalekites are the descendants of Esau through the birth of their mothers who were Canaanites or the cursed tribe of Ham. Okay? Um, after his promotion, Haman was leaving the king's palace and noticed everyone bowed to him except Esther's uncle, Mordecai. Haman's servant went to Mordecai and asked him to bow. Mordecai informed him that he was a Jew, abducted by Nebuchadnezzar and brought to Jerusalem with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And like them, he bowed only to God. Esther 3, 3 through 4, and, sec and chapter 2, 
chapter 6 and verse 1 in the book of Daniel. Because of Mordecai's unbended knee, Haman came up with a final solution for all Jews who dwelt in the king's realm from India to Ethiopia. Death. So if you didn't bow down, they were going to kill you. Okay? When Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did his reverence, then was Haman full of wrath, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all Jews that were throughout the kingdom of Exraeus, even the people of Mordecai. Esther 3 verses 5 and 6. This black Am Amalite, Amalekite wanted every Jew in his king's district to be killed. Hmm. Hannah. He wanted every Jew. Dead. And Hannah said unto the king Asherus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep their king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to keep them. If it please the king, let it be written that they be destroyed. And I will give thy treasure ten thousand pieces of silver. And the king said unto Haman, Do with them, do with them as it seems good to thee. The scribes wrote according to all that Haman had commanded, that every rule of his promise of the king to kill and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women. And in one day, even on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. And this can be found in Esther 3, verses 8 through 13. When the Jews learned that Amalekite had the king sign an executive order to have them all killed from India to East Africa, they began weeping and wailing and fasting. Mordecai sent Esther word of Haman's intentions that were posted from India to Ethiopia. Esther replied that she could not appear in the king's presence without being summoned or else she would be killed. When Mordecai received Esther's answer, he sent this reply in his dark-skinned niece who had forgotten her Jewish roots. See, so long, for so long, she had been told not to let anybody know that she was Jewish. But now, they can really kill her people. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not that thyself shall escape being in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether thou was brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. So what Mordecai was getting Esther to understand is that it's true. You are in the king's house. True. You can keep your identity a secret. But in doing so, you need to understand that I, as your adopted father, the one who claims you as his daughter, I'll be destroyed. They'll kill me. He said that word to Esther. Let's see what happens. Esther had momentarily forgotten her Hebraic roots 
and intended to continue hiding her Jewish lineage behind her black skin. She had to be reminded by her uncle that she'd been promoted to her position to deliver her people from the present distress. That's why she was there. God had placed Esther there for the favor of the Jewish people. He hadn't just placed her there as chance. But Mordecai had to remind her that God has placed you in this position to save his people. Um, then Esther the queen answered and said, Oh, wait a minute. I skipped some stuff. In response, Esther asked her father to have all the Jews fast for her. So, she had to be reminded by her uncle that she had been promoted to her position to deliver her people from the present distress. And that she would ask her uncle to have all the Jewish people in the provinces to pray for her. And that she would go see the king. And if she perished, she perished. I love her attitude. Let me stand for that which is right. And if that which is right will cause me to die, then I'll die. But I got to stand for that which is right. And that was Esther's attitude. And that's my attitude. Stand for the right. Because if you perish... And perish, but stand in the right place that you may have everlasting life. You're gonna perish from this life anyway. If you perish, you perish. But you must stand. See, it's about the stance that you take for the things that you stand for. For if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. The story climaxes as Esther invited Haman to join her and her husband, the king. As Esther invited Haman to join her and her husband, and the king, for dinner, the king was so pleased with Esther that he told her that he would grant her any desire of her heart up to half of his kingdom. It's a favor. Esther was so loving and pleasant and kind that she found favor with the king, her husband. And he loved Esther so much that he was quite pleased with Esther. And he said, ask me, your husband, anything you want and I will give it to you up to half of my kingdom. That's love. That's a king. That's a king. To hold the one that you love in such high regard. To know this is your partner. She held the king in high regard. And the king held her in high regard. And that's how it's played. You do to them. What you want done to you. Prosody. Let's get it on. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given at my petition. And my people at my request. I have held my tongue for bondmen and bondwomen. And I have held my tongue because of the enemy. Then King Asaras answered Esther and said, Who is he? And where is he that durst presume in heart to do so? And Esther said, the adversary 
an enemy is the wicked Haman. Then Haman afraid before the king and the queen and the king arising from his banquet and wine and wrath went into the palace garden and Haman stood up to make requests for his life so Esther the queen for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Thank you for waiting. Okay. And I'm going to go back to here. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine and wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was falling upon the bed thereon Esther was. Then the king said, Will he force rape the queen also before me in the home? As the word went out the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And one of the chamberlains said before the king, Behold the gallows which Haman made for the Mo for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. And the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was pacified. So you see, The lesson when setting traps for other people beware beware because the trap you set will be the set for you don't set yourself up laying traps for other people Don't set yourself up trying to lay traps for other people. For in the long run, as Mordecai and Esther showed you, and we ain't even done with this story, but I need you to get this message. Don't go around setting traps for people to fall into. Because the trap you set for them will be the trap you set for you. That's your vitamin. Don't go around setting traps for other people. Because the trap you set up will be the trap you set for you. Okay? And on that note, my blessed and beloved... That's your vitamin today. From the book of Esther. Remember Haman. Remember Mordecai. And remember. The trap Haman set. For Mordecai. Was the trap that Haman got himself. Be blessed my beloved. Until it's time. For your next daily dose. In the spiritual vitamin.